It's Spooner. He's coming for me. <laughs> Hello, my name is Nike and Ruth. I'm a Canadian living in London, England, and I react to British things. So today I'm going to be reacting to series one, episode four of Rising Damp. Yes, we're doing the fourth episode today. Unlike the majority of my reactions, this video won't be edited. So you're going to get the full episode today because all of the episodes are on YouTube. So we've been through this. We've been through this. Before I get started, I do want to quickly thank my patrons for supporting me. My patron is my members only site where you get benefits such as early access to my videos and my complete unedited uncensored reaction videos. And if you're a top tier patron, patron shout outs. So thank you to Joseph, Michael, Mitch, Paul, Brian, James, Daniel, Glenn, Louis, Des, John, Reese, Mark, Kane, Claire, Thomas, and Seamus. Let's just get started, shall we? No good, I can't concentrate. Spooner's had that radio on and off all night. Well, why didn't you tell him about it? <laughs> Not me, tell Spooner. He's a professional wrestler, mate. My body do not bend easily these days. <laughs> I'm sure he'd be reasonable. Well, I'm not. Ever since he's had his leg in plaster, it's been impossible. He blames the whole medical profession just because it itches. <laughs> I don't think he'd be quite so angry if he'd have done it in the ring, but tripping over the cat, that's what really annoys yeah. him. <laughs> he blames Rigsby. He says that cat's Rigsby's evil spirit. He's going to wring its neck. He'll do it too, you know. Spooner was a red devil. <laughs> Who are they? Airborne division during the war. Oh, the parachute boys. I don't think Spooner bothered with a parachute. <laughs> He's as hard as nails. He's the one who used to lay across the barbed wire for everyone else to run over. <laughs> he used to break doors down with his head. I'm not telling him to turn his radio down. <laughs> ah, come on, come on. Come on, Vienna. Stand about on the stairs like that. We don't want another accident, do we? Who's a naughty boy? Mr. Rigsby, oh, I really must complain about Mr. Spooner's radio. It was on all last night. Uh, yes, yes, I'll tell him about it, Miss Jones. Yes, it's, uh, it's his leg, you see. He can't scratch it. <laughs> How Radio Luxembourg's going to help? I hardly closed my eyes last night. Never have known that, Miss Jones. You look morning fresh as usual. Well, I don't feel it. I feel shattered. I'm not surprised the stuff you get on the wireless these days. I mean, well, where have all the decent programmes gone to, eh? What happened to In Town Tonight? I'm sure I don't know, Mr. Rigsby. That was before my time. And what about Uncle Mac, then? Good night, children, everyone. <laughs> Still brings a lump to the throat, eh? Well, if you could have a word with Mr. Spooner. Yeah, no sooner said than done, Miss Jones. Thank yeah. you. Uh, and if you, uh, if you find you can't sleep, you knock on my door, all right? I don't sleep much myself, not since Andrea. And uh, make a cup of tea, we can have a little chat about the old days. Oh, well, Mr. Rigsby, I don't think our old days are quite the same. <laughs> In fact, I have very few old days. <laughs> go on, go on, Vienna, go on, off you go, go on. I don't think I'm going to That was such a random, like, acting choice. Like, very interesting acting choice. She's. It was almost like she was talking to a lover but she was talking to the air. We have very different old days. It's almost it's very theatrical. Theatrical, that's the word that I'm looking for. Very theatrical. I don't want to see you at the moment. I don't think you'd have your tripes out. <laughs> yes. What do you want? Oh. Hello, Spooner. How are you feeling? I'll give you three guesses, Rigby. Does it hurt? <laughs> hurt? Of course it hurts. What do you think it's doing? Throbbing like mad. All I can do is sit here staring at the goldfish. Oh, yeah. Funny pets, goldfish. They don't trip you up on the stairs, though, do they? Oh, well, never mind. Hey, that throbbing's a good sign. Eh? Shows it's getting better. Eh? Back in the ring in no time, eh, Spooner? <laughs> hey, do you want me to autograph it? Hey? Y your leg. No, they do that in hospital. It, it provides a bit of amusement. You touch that leg, Rigsby, and I'll provide you with a bit of amusement. <laughs> oh, oh, you're not bad in a grievance, uh, Spooner. I mean, you, you can't blame me and you can't blame Vienna. It's, it's not his fault you didn't see him. I can't put lights on him, can I? <laughs> and, uh, I, 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 I know you feel sorry for him. He likes you, Spooner. That's why he rubbed against your legs. Oh, he rubbed against my legs, all right. <laughs> and I brought him up to see you. You know his fur gets up your nose. <laughs> anyway, as long as you don't bear him any ill will. Do you know what I'm going to do, Rigsby, when I get out of this plaster? No. 
I'm going to get hold of that flea-ridden monster and wring his scruffy neck. And then you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to beat you to death with a carcass. Hey, hey, now listen, I wouldn't touch Vienna if I were you, mate. Anything happens to him, what about, what about his little friends, eh? Where will they go? That'll be after you. For <laughs> 30,000 of them, you know the sound of marching feet, don't you, boo? <laughs> <laughs> He's lovely. Hey, you. When are you going to tell Spooner about that radio? No, 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 no. You, you must make allowances. The man's suffering. So are we. <laughs> well, at least tell him to turn it down. You know your trouble, don't you? You never stop complaining. Nothing suits you. The room doesn't suit you. The furniture doesn't suit you. What furniture? <laughs> what do you expect for the money you pay? G-plan? <laughs> <laughs> I, I suppose you like lights shining through polystyrene, eh? Occasional coffee tables, no drapes. Settle for a few cushions. Cushions? You won't be satisfied. This place looks like the inside of a Turkish brothel. <laughs> If I'd have put any more furniture in here, you'd been overcrowded. <laughs> and whose fault's that? Exactly. Well, of course, I know tensions must arise. Uh, <laughs> up here, under the circumstances, of course. Yeah. What circumstances? Well, nerves about to get taut, aren't they? You know, different ethnic groups, alien cultures. <laughs> Do you mean because I'm black? Which... And, and did I say that? Did that word pass my lips? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, we have to be very careful these days, don't we? Hmm. Look what happened to Enid Blyton. <laughs> See, did Blyton got to do with it? She got into trouble because Noddy didn't like Gollywog. <laughs> Are you talking about me? No, I'm talking about Enid Blyton. <laughs> but we get on perfectly well, thank you very much. Good, because if there's any trouble, you'll be the one to go. He's fireproof. <laughs> <laughs> Victimised minority. He's got rights. What, what about my rights? You haven't got me. <laughs> my father told me when he brought me up here that you'd take advantage of my good nature. Oh, yes, yes, I remember him. Yes, he was the one who kept jumping up and down to see if the floor creaked. <laughs> uh, ended up with his foot through the plaster. Yes, I remember him. He didn't like this place either, I suppose. He didn't say anything. Mm, I know the type. Hey, listen, you should have seen some of the billets I was in during the war, mate. Turn your stomach over. Look, he was in the war. Oh, yeah. What was he in? The Royal Air Force. Oh, <laughs> blue cream boy. <laughs> <laughs> He's bald. Yeah. There was a shower that lot fought the war in carpet slippers. <laughs> but my father didn't. Yeah. What did he think to the room, then? Thought it was high up. Oh, he would. That's typical. Typical of the RAF. <laughs> <laughs> as long as them could stand heights, you couldn't get most of the ladder. <laughs> no, we ever won the war, I'll never know. <laughs> yeah, listen, we were on parade with them in Manchester. They were a spectacle. There was 500 of them. They didn't make a sound. They were like ghosts. Do you know what they were wearing? Hey, rubber boots. <laughs> <laughs> the women's land army could march better than them, and they were pushing wheel better. Surely <laughs> the RAF was supposed to fly, not march, Rigsby. Oh! You mean those mysterious objects standing at the end of the runway, held together with canvas and string? No, no. They never went near them. They went everywhere by luxury coach. Hey, what about 1940? Why? Oh, what well. happened? What happened? Mm. The Battle of Britain, mate. You must have heard about that even in your remote outpost. <laughs> they must have beat that, beat that out on the drums. Huh? <laughs> Battle of the Great Iron Birds. First of the few, mate. Churchill said. Never was yeah. so much given by so many to so few. Never in the field of human conflict was so <laughs> much, much given by so many. by so, so many. many. <laughs> 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 hey, what do we owe your father? Huh? What do you mean? Where was he when this glorious page of history was being written? But he wasn't doing victory rolls over Big and Hill. <laughs> in the stores. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. Never saw an angry man. <laughs> yes, well, of course, he's not the type. Most of them were uh, public school lads, you know, born leaders. I imagine, like, when this was filmed in the 70s, uh, there was still quite a lot of people who uh, lived through the war, and it was more of a population who understood um, what it was like to live through World War II. Uh, whereas now it's mostly just like seniors and you know if, if you're under the age of 85 you won't really have a memory of it or any experience at all because you wouldn't have been born um but yeah just the i'm just thinking like the the audience that is watching this um mostly probably still had a um living memory of world war ii interesting how that kind of works you mean just because my father didn't talk with a plum in his mouth? No, 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 no. They, they were born to it. You know, he'd know what I mean. All that rugby and flicking each other with wet towels. <laughs> they did that. Hey, don't let that foppish man fool you, mate. Underneath he had nerves of steel, those lads. You know, they did climb into the spitfires with teddy bears under their arms. <laughs> uh, don't you underestimate them either. The Luftwaffe made that mistake. Now, nah, you can always count on the boys in blue when the pressure was on. How do you know you can't count on me when the pressure's on? You? Yeah, well, it's not my fault. I missed the war, is it? Perhaps I could have been doing victory rolls over Big and Ill. <laughs> yeah, you're not a man of action. I just realised something. 
when this was aired, I, I don't know when in the 70s this was aired, but like if it was really 70s, it would have been around the same amount of time passed from World War II to the 70s as 9-11 to now because it's about 22 years and I'm actually coincidentally I'm filming this on September 10th so September 11th is tomorrow tomorrow's the 22nd anniversary of September 11th almost there not quite but almost almost there with the amount of time that has passed almost there oh you don't know Rigsby perhaps I could have been a war hero yeah it's not likely though is it I mean you've done nothing but complain about Spooner's raid but you won't tell him about it you want me to do it ah well that's different he is a professional wrestler. He is a professional wrestler with one leg at the moment and you're still frightened of him. <laughs> Suppose he turns nasty. Yes, but of course if you're afraid of him, yes. I'm not afraid. <laughs> Don't be a fool, Alan. I'm not afraid. Yes, you are. I'll go down and tell him now. <laughs> Spooner's been drinking, Alan. I don't care. <laughs> Hello, Spooner. What do you want? How's your leg? <laughs> <laughs> I've been looking at it. I think they've turned it the wrong way. <laughs> I'll end up walking like a penguin. But I, I, sh I shouldn't worry about it, Spooner. Uh, they know what they're doing. <laughs> Spooner, about that transistor. What about it? Can I borrow it? <laughs> no. Uh... It's all I've got, that and the gold. Remember, you were a red devil. Well, that was a long time ago. I'll get dizzy stepping off a pavement nowadays. How many jumps have you had? Eh? Oh, 56. Crikey. Yeah, I could come right down for 3,000 feet and land on a sixpence. One mistake and they'd be scraping you off the tarmac like strawberry jam. And in all that time, I never so much as twisted my ankle. I was taught to fall, you see. Came down those stairs like a sack of potatoes, didn't you? Well, I wasn't expecting it, was I? That mangy cat. I think we'd be taught it to do that, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, if you want any help, Spooner, you know, like peeling your spuds, getting your medicine, all that. Yeah, well, thanks very much, Alan. You know, you're the only one round here that's shown any sympathy. Well, I like that. I mean, I can't ignore human suffering. <laughs> See these hands? Trained to heal. I have this marvellous soothing quality. It's amazing how quiet people become when I get near the bed. It only just stopped throbbing at all. Uh, I thought you said your hands were trained to heal. Well, they are. Well, these hands have been trained to kill. Now get out of here, boy. <laughs> oh, 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 look at this, Luna. Oh, oh. Fifteen stone wrestler, you're behaving like a baby. You know what you are, eh? You know what you are? A fake. A fake? Yeah. I always thought wrestling was fixed. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, what happened? <laughs> can't hear anything, can you? What you mean you told him? You're very pale. Usually I'm when I'm angry. Oh, I don't believe it. Don't let this foppish manner fool you, Rigsby. <laughs> Underneath there are nerves of steel. I could have been up there. <coughs> over the Weald of Kent. A couple of 109s before breakfast. I looked him straight in the eye and told him it was a fake. You said that to Spooner. I can't believe it. <laughs> Did you really say that? Yep. I didn't know you had the nerve. Ah. It's at times like this, Philip, when we realise what we're really made of. What's that? Oh. <laughs> it's Spooner. He's coming for me. <laughs> it stopped. Oh, don't let him get me, Philip. Don't let him get me. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Biggles. Oh, my God. Yeah, you turn out to be a right nappy candle, isn't you? Sure, <laughs> <laughs> <Should, should be. laughs> Well, you're not surprised. I saw them go like that in the war. You know, all talk for the first sign of danger, then they fell apart. You'd have been one of the first to crack. Well, what about you, Rigsby? Why don't you tell Spooner? Me? I'm not complaining. I'm a little bit of music. Doesn't worry me. You won't go because Spooner threatened to wring your neck. I'm surprised that someone who faced the might of the German army should be afraid of Spooner. That is, if you did face the might of the German army. Oh, yes. Yeah. So what are you getting at? Only that I always thought English heroes were supposed to be modest. Yeah, I heard that people who really saw action never talk about it. Oh, well, you know why, don't you? Because nobody listens anymore. They're not interested. They just want to forget the whole thing, that's all. Yeah. Oh, just a 
A couple of puppies on Armistice Day, that's about it. Yeah, the parades get shorter every year. They can't even be bothered to keep quiet for the two-minute silence, now. They'd rather hold a pop festival any day. <laughs> Do you know, I often wonder what we save this country for, you know. <laughs> hey, what happened to all the old traditions, eh? What happened to, to good old British grit? I think you're sweeping most of it under the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, mate, I was one of the first. I was there. I didn't take any notice of old Chamberlain, you know. In my hand, I have a piece of paper. We all knew what he could do with that. <laughs> and I saw action, too. Don't you make it... Now, look, if you don't believe me, mate, what about this? What do you think? <laughs> what do you think this is? Looks like your nipple. <laughs> no, Sorry, it's the wrong side. Here. You think that is? That's your other nipple. No, 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 no. Here, here, here. Shrapnel, mate. If that moves another inch, I'll be the last casualty of World War II. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, shit. Ah, now, here's somebody who knows what it was like to go without during the war. <laughs> uh, no orange juice for you, was it, Miss Jones? Well, I was very small. Yeah. I was only a baby. Yeah, well, you, you must remember it, though. You know, ration books, gas masks, yes, potato peat, Dr. Carrot, Vicky Pie. <laughs> no, I don't remember. I mean, I was still in my tram. Yes, but, but it was the people's war, though, wasn't it, Miss Jones? I mean, everyone suffered. Well, it was some years before I saw a banana. Yes, yeah, there you are, you see. <laughs> and Mother always insisted that we were machine gunned coming from the vicarage. She was pushing me in my pram, and this Messerschmitt died very low. She saw the pilot quite clearly. In fact, she swore it was somebody she'd met in Germany before the war. <laughs> what she must have said to him to make him go to those lengths, I can't imagine. There we are. What do you think of that, eh? Miss Jones even defied the Luftwaffe from her pram. That's what it was like in those days, mate. Blood, sweat, tears, sacrifice. You, you lot don't know you're born. Well, it's not my fault I was born too late, is it? I mean, I could have made sacrifices. You make so... <laughs> you fly into a tantrum if you have to go without your puffed rice. <laughs> Sacrifice? You couldn't have made it. Your, your hair's too long. You too many sticky sweets. No, you, you, you know your trouble? You never did your national service. So what? So what? You could have seen the world, lad. Could have had your own Brendan carrier at 18. A good bunch of mates. <laughs> you wouldn't have been frightened of Spooner. Oh, that's what I really came up about. Hmm? We really must do something about Mr Spooner. Uh, oh, yes, yes. I, I, I was no good asking him, Miss Josie. He came back terrified. I wouldn't say that. He's right, Philip. Of course I'm right. Who wants to get the spiders out of the bath for him? I do. <laughs> that's true. OK, I'm a physical coward. I don't mind admitting it. <laughs> the same when I was at home. All the dogs in the street used to bark at me. <laughs> Even ours. <laughs> there are different kinds of courage, Alan. I mean, we wouldn't like to go into a ward full of smallpox. Neither would I. <laughs> it was all a long time ago. You don't want to listen to Rigsby's stories. I mean, how do we know what really happened? I beg you. Are you calling me a liar? All I'm saying is that the memory can sometimes play tricks. Oh, oh, the mem oh, oh we see. We see whose memory can play tricks. But just you wait here a minute. Just you wait a minute. Now we're in for it. What do you mean? He'll be bringing up his burnished shell cases. <laughs> and his letter from Monty. <laughs> He'll be fighting World War II all over the house again, shouting at us in German and kicking the door down and telling us all those ridiculous stories. How he knocked out a German machine gun nest with an empty beer bottle. He never shuts up about it. I storm the house I'll show you a thing or two. What's that? Yes, uh, evidence, mate. Mementos of five years of conflict. Well, I can't stay, Mr. Rigsby. I really only came up to complain about Mr. Spooner. Uh, yes, yes, of course, Major. Yes, I'm getting round to it. Uh, to, you know how hasty he can be. Spooner was a red devil. Mm. But were they on our side? <laughs> we were never quite certain. <laughs> uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll certainly tell him, Miss Jones. After all, uh, I know it is my job. Would you, Mr. Rigsby? Yeah. I'd be very grateful. You, you, you Excuse going? me. Philip, well, can we come outside for a moment? My front tire needs pumping up. <laughs> it's gone flat again. <laughs> Never asked me to pump up my tires. Do you know, it's always in. <laughs> oh, I don't know. But at, at least I thought she'd be interested in these. I don't know, nobody's interested anymore. Ma, God, they soon forget what you've done for them, don't they? Eh? <laughs> there were no flags up for me when I came home. No banners across the street saying, welcome home for me. I hoped I wasn't coming. <laughs> what, what, what did he ever do for the war effort round here, eh? Absolutely, I mean, apart from that bloke opposite. Nothing. Well, what did he do? Hmm? Oh, he was the first to take his railings down for scrap iron. Mm. <laughs> uh, first to put them back up again when it was over, too. Kept them together. What's this? Hmm? Oh, ah, ah, then. Ah, SS dagger. Uh, sharp, isn't it? 
How many throats did that slit on the night of the long knives, I wonder? <laughs> yeah, 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 you see, you're not used to cold steel. It's all this electric shaving. <laughs> oh, God, he started to sing now. I suppose I'd better go and tell him. I did promise her. You could do yourself a bit of good as well. She did say she'd be grateful. Yeah. What if he turns nasty, though? <laughs> Show him what you're made of. I will need to be all over the floor. <laughs> Frightened of him, are you, Rigsby? Well, yeah, yeah. just because he was a red devil? Yeah. It was a long time ago, you know. You've got nothing to worry about. Well, you do want to win a respect, don't you? Well, yes, of course. Well, go on then. Right. <laughs> all along the hall. What about it? You know, fantastic the way it carries, you know. <laughs> I thought you'd come in to complain about it. Uh, complain? No, of course not, Spoon. No, what gave you that idea? The last fella that complained about it, I snapped him like a twig. <laughs> like a twig, eh, Spooner? <laughs> he said I sang flat. You don't think I sing flat, do you, Richard? No, no, spot on, spot on. <laughs> You've got a lovely voice. I'm glad about that, because I'm in a nasty mood. When I'm in a nasty mood, I'm inclined to do nasty things. Like tying people up in knots. You could see parts of your body you never knew existed. Yeah, no, 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 I saw action, you know. I've seen as much action as you have, mate. Where were you when the bullets were flying? Floating around the heavens like a bloody mushroom. Yeah! <laughs> and, uh, and, and don't let me have to tell you again. That's the last time, all right? Now, you keep that radio down, because you don't frighten me, Spooner. I don't know the meaning of the word, all right? <laughs> Captain's 45, that you know. Is it loaded? Is it? Of course it's not loaded. You don't leave guns lying around loaded, don't you know anything? <laughs> oh, whizzy hands! Don't point that at me! Well, you said it wasn't loaded. You don't point guns at people, that's the first rule. How right? did we win the war then? Handle <laughs> <laughs> these things with respect, mate. Look at that, look at that action, eh? It's as smooth as the day it was made. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> Circumstances. I thought he'd be more upset. You should have been with Spooner was. Oh, God, but I'm going to die. I'm having some time to think. Oh, Mr. Rinsby, have you told Mr. Spooner yet? Nobody I won't listen now. Well, I can't stand it any longer. I'll tell him myself. No, you, you can't go in there. Why not? Rigsby's just shot him. Did <laughs> <laughs> he turn his radio down? Wasn't that rather drastic? <laughs> I didn't mean to do it, Miss Jones. It was an accident. I didn't do it on purpose. I could never hit a barn door. Well, you said you were trained to kill. Whose side are you on? <laughs> we look at him or something. Oh, no, no, I, I couldn't go in. I never could stand the sight of blood. You go. Oh, God, spoon, spoon. And he was so alive just a minute ago. It's very fast. 
Alan, you're holding his wristwatch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't find it. Have you got a mirror? This is no time to be thinking about your appearance, I think. <laughs> Poor Mr. Spooner, we were so unkind to him. Can't you do anything? It's too late now. Death has cheated me again. <laughs> Poor old Spooner. Under the circumstances. <laughs> Spoon, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it was an accident. I didn't do it on purpose. I promise I'll never do it again. Spoon, what can I say? Just say one last word. Can you ever forgive me, Spooner? No, I can't! <laughs> I've been trying to get to sleep for two days, and when I finally manage it, you're whispering in me, I was shooting bullets through the door! You rotten sod! You could have given me a heart attack! I've aged ten years! Come on, Bigsby! I thought I'd never smile again! That's the biggest laugh I've had since I tripped over the cat! <laughs> What's the matter, Rigsby? Where's your sense of humour? Can't you see the funny side of it? No, I cannot! Let the bullet end up then, eh? Hey, that's a point. Oh! Your poor little goldfish! What? Oh. 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 Uh, well, don't just stand there and put him in water! Hey, if they don't come round, Spoon, we can have him for the cat. Hey! Let me get a sense of humor! You wait for That's really funny. I enjoyed that one. Uh, yeah. Oh, Rigsby's hilarious. Ugh. Yeah. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the reaction. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Bye. See you next time.